Good morning. It's Friday, September 1st, 2023. My name is Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, A Time for War and a Time for Peace. And our scripture is Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and also Matthew's Gospel chapter 10. Solomon writes, For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time for war, and a time for peace. And then Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, where he tells us that Jesus told them, Don't imagine that I came to bring peace to the earth. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. Timing is everything. So said my dad, who was a certified bowling instructor, trying to teach me how to roll the ball towards the pins with effectiveness and the kind of repetitive consistency needed to score better. And I said, what? I'm certain Jesus was saying the same kind of wisdom to his disciples in that day and getting the same kind of doe-in-the-headlights reaction. It is true, in a both-and sense, that Jesus is the Prince of Peace, as much as he is the Lord of Heaven's armies. He who self-described himself as love is also the author of Ecclesiastes. It's a matter, as my favorite bowling instructor would say, of timing. When Jesus came the first time, lowly, meek, and riding on a donkey, we saw him as the submissive, perfect sacrificial lamb. He demonstrated his love by taking our pain in his body. The next time he comes, it will be as a warrior coming to clean up our mess. Question, does Jesus' character change from loving dove to unrelenting hawk in the thousand-year interlude between Ecclesiastes and Matthew? Did he only come in peace the first time? And will he put aside that and be different the next time? Did we get Ecclesiastes wrong? God inspired Solomon to write those words, and God called him the wisest among men. Yet Solomon says there's a time and place for peace as well as war. Well, the answer must be a resounding no, if you believe the Bible. He said this, I am the Lord, and I do not change. Malachi 3.6 So, how do we reconcile all this? Is Jehovah a God of war and peace, or just one and not the other? When he shows up as Jesus, we can expect love, kindness, and grace, but when he shows up as the I am, look out? Well, I think you know the answer to that, but let's put it in another scenario. Suppose it's the issue of homosexuality. Is he the God of, I love you, I'm okay, and you're okay, and you aren't in for any judgment? Or is he the God who says, that is sexual perversion. If you buy into that, there's fire on the horizon for you, beloved. Now, applying that to contemporary culture, the trend is to an absence of judgment on God's part. American culture is quite evenly divided, but only because there's a relatively even distribution of humans above and below 50 years of age. Depends on who you survey. But the trend is moving towards popular culture legitimizing and even applauding the practice of homosexuality. A greater question then becomes, if public opinion is moving in one direction, does that make it right? Ultimately, there's no fence upon which to sit in this issue, and that brings only two possibilities, both of which are supremely uncomfortable for those who want to reject biblical precedent. God will judge, or Scripture is wrong. We're forced to obey God, or popular opinion. There's no in-between. And humans mess up, and we must own our mess up to be forgiven, or defend our beliefs. You cannot do both. Within the denomination I served the past two decades, the move has been towards popular opinion, with those disagreeing jumping ship to band together with those holding biblical doctrine. And among both those who are staying or leaving are some who are taking parting shots at the other side's position as a lack of biblically moral character, preferring to judge motives and intelligence. The God we're talking about was not silent on that either. 
Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7. Jesus said, Do not judge others, and you will not be judged, for you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? For you today, I take the personal stand for biblical obedience to love other sinners, simply because I'm also a forgiven sinner. I will not compound my sins by judging others. So what say you? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.